Hello, my name is Matt Storr, and I repair saxophones for a living. Today, I would like to show you a 1938 Martin Handcraft Committee II alto saxophone. Uh, this was made by the Martin Band Instrument Company in Elkhart, Indiana, USA, in 1938. And this model, the Handcraft Committee II, was made from 1938 to 1942. And the serial number range is 127,000 to 143,000. Uh, this one is a 131,000, and as you can see here, it says Martin Committee II on the back here by the thumb rest. This nice adjustable thumb rest, which I believe uh, this might be the first place you see this on Martin's, although it might be on the Committee One. I'm not entirely sure. Um, these beautiful Art Deco key guards here. Those just look really gorgeous, I think. Um, on this back key guard here, uh, you'll notice these two screws here. Uh, these will unscrew and this V-shaped one comes off. Make sure you put a piece of adjustment material here to silence that, otherwise this will rattle. Um, so this is the Handcraft Committee 2, so-called because it is a Handcraft Committee. Um, and you can see, you might be able to read that there on the belt of body brace, handcraft. Um, Martin's saxophone that you most often hear of is probably the Martin Committee 3, people call it, although it didn't say Committee 3 on it, um, also called the Martin Committee. That is the model after this saxophone. The model prior to this saxophone was the Martin uh, Handcraft Committee also called the Handcraft Committee 1, although obviously at that time it wasn't called the Committee 1 because there weren't any others just yet. Um, and that one has uh, a very similar look to it, but different engraving. If you look on this, you see this beautiful engraving, sometimes called the Lion and the Crown. There's the Lion, and there's the Crown. The Martin Handcraft Committee 1 had a searchlight engraving. Looks similar to this, but it had searchlights going over a city with like a biplane. Some people call it the Mars Attacks uh, engraving. So that one was prior to this saxophone. And the one after this is the Martin Committee, the Martin, which is what most people think of when they think of Martin saxophones. Now, this instrument um, is quite a bit different than the other Martins. Uh, the early Martins, the Martin Handcrafts, are very similar to uh, true tone instruments. They're very old uh, professional saxophones, very dark, pretty powerful. Um, all Martins obviously have these soldered tone holes instead of drawn tone holes. That is, instead of tone holes that are pulled out of the body, uh, there's just holes cut in the body, and then these large tone holes are soldered on, um, which you can see there pretty good. Um, the sound on these, though, is a bit different than what you might expect. The earlier ones are really dark and powerful. The later ones are really uh, powerful and fat. Um, this has a rather more delicate tone, um, and the intonation is actually pretty good, um, which is not something most people think of when they think of Martin saxophones. But on the Handcraft Committee 2 Alto in particular, uh, the intonation is actually very good. And they even have uh, something rather advanced on here that you don't see too often. You see on the octave mechanism here, if I can get the camera to focus, see when I press the octave key, this guy right here with his adjustment screw is attached to this key here. So when you play your second octave C sharp, that key actually closes a bit. And that brings the pitch of your second octave C sharp down. Uh, to where it needs to be. And you can control exactly how far that key goes down with this adjustment screw here. Um, now you might be able to see it doesn't close all the way. Okay, And you actually don't want it to close all the way. If you have the octave key close this key all the way, uh, that ends up being too flat. So you'll have to find out exactly where your horn needs, needs it to be, but um, this will be probably closed at least two-thirds of the way in order to get that in, into tune. And again, that's controlled right back here. You also notice this uh, thumb rest here for the octave key, which is extremely comfortable. Um, I wish that more saxophones had this. This is a really great design. So the intonation on this instrument is actually really good. Um, I don't have any problems at all. And actually, altissimo on this is very, very easy. 
Uh, ergonomically, it's pretty comfortable. It's definitely old fashioned. You've got your uh, old style um, pinky table. The C sharp and G sharp, that is an automatic G sharp, so you're playing your C sharp arpeggio and your G sharp stays uh, open. Um, but the B and B flat are not connected to your G sharp, but they are obviously connected to each other. You've got your adjustable thumb rest here, which is really comfortable and also looks really nice. You just unscrew this. You can move that up and down, and then screw it back in. Uh, the keys are in line, much the same as most other saxophones made in this period. Um, and the action is very light. Uh, the springs that come on this, if you've got your original springs, you're going to find them to be pretty light compared to modern instruments. Um, you can change them out if you want to, but I really like the way it feels. Got nice, large, flattish type pearls. Feels really good under the fingers. Um, you've got a front F. The pink, left hand pinky table, um, while it doesn't look super comfortable, uh, because the tensions are so light and when you've got this set up well, these are just solid rods uh, that actuate these directly. Um, it's actually pretty comfortable and pretty fast. Although it's not uh, very modern looking, it actually plays pretty well. Palm keys are also pretty comfortable. Front F works well. Altissimo on this instrument in particular um, is, for me, a breeze. It's really, really easy, really in tune. You can play your overtones really well. Um, the sound on it, I think I started to get into this earlier, is quite a bit different than most Martins. Um, it's dark, but kind of refined. Um, when, I was, when I was fixing this, uh, when I was overhauling this, I was kind of expecting to have, um, you know, a very fat, big, like, large sound, um, something that you would maybe hear, like, in a burlesque club or something like that. But um, when I finished it, uh, the music that I found it lent itself to is much more like um, ballads and small group jazz, um, even classical music I was playing on this. And the intonation is such that you actually can. Um, it's got a really beautiful, um, I don't want to say small tone because that makes you think that it's like a small, you know, like there's not much there. There's a lot there, it's just, I don't know, I don't know how to say it. It's refined, it's, it's a really beautiful tone. I really, really like it. Um, I was pleasantly surprised uh, with how this instrument sounded and I ended up playing it uh, quite a bit. Um, but it just, it kind of lends itself to... Um, like love songs and ballads and things that are songs about things that are sad. I've heard people say that they'll use this saxophone for like lead alto, um, and I'm sure with the right mouthpiece that's something you could do. But um, for me, I feel like small group um, or po possibly classical or ballads would be really the best thing to do. Oh, and you can see also the key work is solid nickel. That's not nickel plate. Um, these keys are solid nickel. So uh, if this horn, if you find one of these and it's been relacquered or it's been you know around the block or it's been dropped down the stairs, um, getting this key work to be nice and tight again um, can be pretty difficult. Uh, it'll ruin most key fitting tools uh, because the nickel is so hard. But unless it's been actually damaged through relacquering or being dropped, um, you shouldn't find there to be too much wear. Um, also, the keys, you can see here a little bit, there's some lacquer burn. The keys are lacquered, and the lacquer, as is Martin uh, tradition, is pretty delicate. And this one has a couple lacquer burns uh, on it from some time in the past. But it's kind of astonishing that it has much, this much lacquer left at all, because uh, most of these don't. So usually you're going to find these, they're not going to look quite as nice as this. There's not a whole lot of them around. Um, you know, they're only made for a few years, right before World War II, um, and into the first uh, year and a half of World War II. And there's a few thousand of them made, um, not a whole lot of them floating around. When you do find them, they're between $1,000 and $2,000, depending on condition. Um, one as nice as this would definitely, you know, and with a fresh overhaul on it, um, is definitely going to be in the upper range. A lot of times you'll find this piece here is missing. Um, and that's not essential. It'll work without it, and you can make it pretty easily yourself. Um, but that's something to be aware of. Uh, also, make sure that this is still functional. 
Um, and really the main thing you want to look for is make sure that your key work is still tight. Right? If your key work on this, if it's been buffed and the keys aren't as tight as they were, or the posts are moved because it's been damaged, um, that can be a real major job uh, getting everything nice and tight again. But if you find one of these, it's really nice. They're extremely nice instruments, and I think they're beautiful. Uh, the nickel against lacquer, a lot of people see that today and they think, oh, well, it's a student instrument. But it wasn't always that way. Um, this was actually a premium finish back in the day. To have either silver plated or nickel keys against lacquer was a premium finish. Um, and it wasn't until later, in the late 50s, early 60s, that student instruments started having nickel keys, probably because of the durability. Um, and lacquered bodies. So now when you see nickel and lacquer you think student instrument. But it is not so for the Martin Handcraft Committee 2. Um, and the main differences that you can tell from quite far away with this between the Handcraft Committee 2 and the Handcraft Committee uh, is the engraving. If you've got a lion and a crown it's a Handcraft Committee 2. Also above the serial number you'll see Martin Com 2. Um, they should all say low pitch. I don't think there were any high pitch made. Um, also, keep an eye out for these key guards. A lot of times these are broken off or pieces missing. Um, and they're pretty complex pieces. If you don't have them, getting them made is kind of a pain. Um, but they are really beautiful. I think they look really good. So I've actually I took some good photos of this saxophone and put it up on my website as well. So if you'd like to have some uh, closer looks at some of the details, you can check it out there. So, uh, that's it for today. This is the Martin Handcraft Committee 2, just overhauled by Matt Store. That's me. If you'd like more information, uh, you can post a question in the comments here. You can email me, call me, check out my website where I have a photo spread of this instrument. And that's about it. I hope this was helpful, and thanks for watching.